Now, have I got a treat for everyone today? We're in a magnificent machine. 2006 Fiat Doblo. It's magnificent in some ways. So this is a 2006 Fiat Doblo with a 1.9 multi-jet diesel engine. Uh, we're not just gonna review cool stuff on this channel. We don't discriminate against ugly cars either. So the Fiat Doblo started production in 2000 and it looks like this. Yep, it looked like a multipler uh, on roids really. Very ugly, very utilitarian and this 2006 facelift isn't that much better. Um, it's not exactly winning the beauty prize but that's not what this car's for. So they started in 2000 up to 2006 they had the super ugly one and then in 2006 this one came out and this ran up until 2012 uh, and they pretty much changed nothing it's almost exactly the same now this amazing one the international van of the year so this is a, a van platform i know this one's not exactly a van but the doblo won the van van of the year award in 2006 and it was voted as the van of the year by 19 different countries so it's doing something right it's based upon a fiat strada which if you don't know what it is like i didn't it looks a little bit like the skoda felicia it's based upon that and it's very rudimentary it's very basic it's got leaf spring back suspension and mcpherson struts up front and it came with a range of engines the most common in the UK are the 1.3 multi-jet, which you can get from 2006 onwards, and this engine, the 1.9, and that had different power variants as well. So this is 110, you got a 120 horsepower version as well, um, and they're pretty good. They're in so many different cars, they built millions of them. Uh, Vauxhall used them, so if you, in the Vauxhall combo you'll see the same engine. Um, so there's, the, there's an abundance of parts and they're pretty cheap to fix. Uh, however, they are extremely rattly engines. So the Dola has very humble origins. Um, it got made all around the world and they sold it all around the world. They even licensed this out to North Korea and was rebadged as, I can't even pronounce it, so I'm not going to try it, but I'm just going to put it up on the screen and they produced it in North Korea, and I still think they do. The other engines that came with it were a 1.4 petrol, uh, a 1.9 diesel without a turbo. Uh, they even did a 1.2 petrol, but that wasn't in the UK. I think there's two engines to go for. It's either the 1.3 or the 1.9. The 1.9 is a bit pokier. Uh, it's relying less on the turbo, you've got a bit more torque, so this is probably the engine to go for. And they are, they're rattly, not very refined, but they'll probably chug along for miles and miles. Having said that, I'm having reoccurring issues with the drive belt on this one and the tensioner, and I've had to swap a couple out and I've only owned it two years. After the 2007, due to emissions, so what I blabber on here about and get wrong is the fact that the 1.9 GTD, which stopped in 2006, that was a Euro 3 car. The multi-jets from 2006 were Euro 4 cars, that includes the 1.3, um, and they managed to do that with a, without a diesel particulate filter. In 2008, it became law to have a diesel particulate filter. So there was a sweet spot between 06 and 08 where you could get a Euro 4 non-diesel particulate filter car and you don't have the DPF issues. These are some tight country lanes. The engine will do 50 mpg if you're cruising it on the motorway. Round tower is not too bad either, probably return around 40. Now suspension and steering. Again, it's not exactly inspiring, um, but it's it's fine. I mean, it does its job. The fact that it's got leaf springs seems like a disadvantage, but that's actually really good for vans, and that's exactly why they put leaf springs in it. 
leaf springs can take a huge uh, payload and this can take on book 750 kg or just under 730 kilograms now that's a lot for such a small van and I've tested it it can do a ton quite comfortably without too much hassle uh, so there's a there's a good reason they left the leaf springs in the back of this and the front muck first and struts are exactly what you expect them to be I'm not gonna rag it around like I did the Mazda, but it does the job adequately. And you know what, if you're trying to get to your destination quickly with whatever valuable item you have in the back, you can get there. It's not, it's not too bad. You have a really nice driving position. It's very 4x4-esque, you sit very high up. But it's super comfortable. I've done five hours in this car, no problem. No like backache that I get from some other cars. Just drives nice and comfortably. And then you have this little armrest as well, which is a big benefit on a long drive. The gearbox is smooth, it's easy. This light feeling, same with the steering, it's nice and light. It's a little bit numb. It's, it's not exactly world-class steering, but gets the job done. Now the design of this is, I mean, it's definitely Marmite. And I think in this case, more people hate it than love it. It's utilitarian and there's lots of places where you can see it's just screwed together and there's no effort to like cover up the screw holes. Um, it's nice and easy to take panels off. You know, what? I have to admire it for its, for its honesty. The interior, well, unsurprisingly, it's cheap and Italian and Fisher Price spec for sure. Well, we can say it's easy to wipe down surfaces. Yeah, it's just hard plastic everywhere. There's a little bit of effort on the door cards here with a little bit of fabric, but it's literally just stuck onto the hard plastic. And the clips have kind of rattled loose. It's cheap, there's nothing, there's nothing to say. The steering wheels all disintegrate into nothing. The UVs must just destroy them. And this one was no different. I got like a leather steering wrap that you stitch together uh, off eBay. Works a treat. Now I have this lovely leather steering feel and smell. Now talking of interior, this is where the Doblo wins and this is what this car is for. This has 3.2 cubic meters of space when you've got the feet, seats folded all the way back. That's crazy amount. I mean, just look at some figures on a 4x4. I'm just about to buy a Santa Fe. And that's considered a great car for storage uh, in the in that class of 4x4. And that's like a mid-sized 4x4. And that's only got 2.2. So you can imagine how big the boot is on this. Even with all the seats up on the five-seater version, it still has 730 liters worth of boot space. It's just mind-bogglingly big like there's nothing that can really be this for the size of vehicle and that's where this trumps everything and if you need space if you're moving house if you just constantly carry heavy things big bulky things in the boot this is the car and you can pick these up super cheap I got this one for 1200 pounds two years I spent about 300 pounds in maintenance over those two years nearly nothing and it's riding fine and I'm sure this would go on another 50,000 miles easy no problem it's currently on 124,000 miles yeah it's a little bit rattly it's cheap the diesel engine drives me crazy and idle when it's cold it's so rattly but when you've got it just cruising along at 55 here it's, it's actually all right it's quite quiet um, you comfortably take five people and 10 suitcases in the back this came in a five and seven seater version. There's fixed position, uh, but there's plenty of room uh, for people in the back. You can get five in there quite comfortably. Uh, they're even separate seats. Um, the seventh row is another two seats that you can uh, buy optionally. Uh, hard to come by, I haven't actually found any. Not that I've been really looking. And if you have those in, I know it's gonna be really tight. There's, not enough room but you know some small kids in the back 
fine. These also were quite commonly used for mobility vehicles, so you can get uh, the ramp so the wheelchair can, can fit into it. Uh, and that's the, the reason is it's just so cavernous in the, in the rear. Now the tax is two, 205 pounds, it's slightly less for the 1.3 diesel. I don't know what the 1.4 tax will probably be around the same. Reliability, as I said, hasn't been too bad. Little bits and bobs have broken, but the prices are so cheap, I don't get too angry. The heater, resistor, they um, essentially rust away and then the heating stops, that was 13 pounds. Um, the door latch for the boot, that broke, that was like 10 pounds. The small things like that. I had to re-weld the, the door here. The little, you know the, how it clips into three places or four places when you have the door open? That started just ripping up off the body. It needed a weld and it's fine. So it's kind of a make do and mend car this, but in a good way like the owner before and kind of why I bought it like I need to move a lot of stuff they were moving house they needed a temporary car they had it for six months got all their furniture to their new house and moved it on and that's exactly what this is for it's just a really practical ugly <laughs> daily which is another great thing no one's ever going to pay any attention to it you're not going to care if it gets a scrape either and they're cheap and they're everywhere and they can be fixed easily. Now, it's not the best ride, it's noisy, it's cheap inside, but that's not what this car's for. So if you look at it, what it was built for, essentially look at it as a van with some windows in the back and another rear, uh, a rear bench of seats. And then you're looking at a great proposition for not much money, because if you want a van equivalent, you're gonna be spending like a grand of two more. Now the competition, you could get a Citroen Berlingo. Again, very similar car, but they're slightly smaller. Definitely not as much space in the Berlingo. There are some cool options on the Berlingo where there was like a, there was a sunroof just here that popped out specifically to get long planks of wood in, um, which is very cool. There's the Peugeot Partner. I don't believe they did a, a non-van version of that. But I believe this is the pick of the bunch because it's the biggest interior space and that's what these are about. These are about getting as much junk in the trunk as you can and this did it best. Nowadays there's loads of different, there's like a Mini and a Maxi, there's all these different versions of the same car depending on what size requirement you want. Back then there was just the one car. So there you go, there's my Mark 1 2006 Fiat Doubler review. So I, I think you can see I'm gonna review anything. Anything that comes my way, it doesn't have to be fast or quick or fun. It can be quirky and ugly and practical. Um, but I have an appreciation for anything. They all have their golden elements. There's, there's nuggets of gold somewhere. Um, so I hope this is useful for someone. Uh, stay tuned, a few others coming. And uh, yeah, I would say I'm gonna go enjoy some B roads, but I'm gonna go enjoy loading up my luggage. <laughs> Subscribe if you enjoyed. Hope you stay tuned. See you in the next one.